Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally Go, your favorite Chindo girl. So I invited here Yifen. She is a Chinese Malaysian, and today we're going to talk about something very interesting to me, and I think all of you guys would like to know also about vernacular school in Malaysia. I think it's something that has been a hot debate in your country, if I might say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Indonesia, we don't have that kind of school here, like the system itself is not mm -hmm. familiar towards us Indonesian. So perhaps mm -hmm. through this video, you guys will be enlightened and you guys will know more about vernacular school and the history behind it and everything else. So stay tuned until the very end. Where did you study and what school was it? In primary school, I studied in a vernacular school, SJKC in Kuantan, where my hometown is. Mm -hmm. And then after six years of uh, mandatory primary school education, then I moved on to SMK. So Kolam Menengah Kebangsaan. That is the place where we started to have integrations of uh, Malay and Chinese as well as Indian people together. That is five years of mandatory education. Same like Indonesia, we need to complete 12 years of compulsory education, but we only have 11, six in primary, another five in secondary. So we would normally add on one year in matriculation, foundations or form six, we call it then only we'll go to the um, university. Vernacular school is actually part of a government school. So oh. private school would be international school. Obviously, it's much more expensive. Uh, oh, oh, but, um, I didn't know that. Vernacular school is actually government school. We do not get uh, complete funding from government directly. Of this, uh, we also operate based on a lot of uh, donations from uh, parents as well as uh, like parents, teacher associations, stuff like that. Mm. Mm. But then what we studied in exams like Bahasa Melayu, English and Mathematics, everything, uh, we also based on the government guidelines. Back then when, when we studied, it was uh, KBSR, if not mistaken. Uh, when we finished the entire primary school, the national school was taking five subjects and ours was taking seven subjects because we add on to examinations paper of Chinese. I always thought Chinese school or like vernacular school is not part of government school. When I thought of Chinese school, my immediate thought would be private school using Chinese because there is only that kind of school here in Indonesia. It is the same, just that the Bahasa Pangantaran would be in Mandarin, most of it in Mandarin. So okay. that, that's the only difference. And it's actually open for all. Tamil people, right? Hindu, uh, it's open for Muslim as well. It's open for all Malaysian citizens as long as you wanted to study in that school. It's just that you need to learn the language, Mandarin. Mm -hmm. mm. What if you started from zero, you don't know the basic of Mandarin, but then you want to study in Chinese school, then how would that be for the student? Definitely it's difficult. So I met several parents. They also send their kids, although they are from a non-Chinese family, they also send their kids to the uh, vernacular school as JKC. Of course, at the beginning, it would be difficult. As you go along, you have friends and teachers to help you. There's feedback from parents that whenever they have difficulties on homework, the parents cannot help them. These are the challenges. When it's challenging, right, why would their parents choose this school over the normal government school using Malay? Then? In SJKC, we have a lot of homework. I remember when I was young, we have tons of homework every day and we need to practice writing. The, the writing. We have to write six pages every single day, never miss. The book is about this size, like an A4 size. Mm. So we have one, two, three, four, four different characters on the same page, writing about 12 times. Uh, so that's six pages. Wow. Can this you imagine in... how much writing that we need to do? This was in primary yes. school. Yes. Uh. Wow, wow, wow. I suppose they send their children to Chinese school so that they would be able to speak and understand Mandarin. Yes, and also be more competitive in the future. I heard it's also stricter, right? Because I know some of my friends who are non-Chinese, uh, they can speak perfect Chinese and they can even write well. What are the main differences other than the language? There's increasing trend of uh, non-Chinese also sending their children to vernacular school because every parent, I believe, they wanted their child to be more competitive in the future. When they study in vernacular school, one thing is the advantages of the language. Second thing is the responsibility of getting more homework. There are people sending uh, to the national school, of course. Why? Because I guess this is just the choice of uh, parents. Right now, all Malay is definitely a Muslim, right? Islam. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. 
Oh uh, yeah, that's not the case here. That's why we we don't have Chinese Malay this separation kind of even like in the form section. You guys have to tick sometimes your race, right? And others mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Indonesia, we don't have that. And that is why people do not want to abolish this vernacular school. Mm-hmm. Although there are a lot of uh, noises out there that we should mm-hmm. establish the sekolah wawasan. Which I agree. Yes, I agree to have a sekolah wawasan. May I know what sekolah wawasan is? Everyone is trying to achieve this one, whereby all vernacular school are abolished. There's mm-hmm. no national school, no SJKC, but mm-hmm. all three races and other bumi putras or asli are studying in the same school. Ah. That's called sekolah wawasan. Somehow we are separated because of the language barrier. Mm-hmm. But the reason why people still do not want to abolish the vernacular school is because they are afraid of losing the competitiveness in coming from the SJKC. Unless the Sokola Wawasan provide us with very good um, education system, just like a Japan that provides us with IT, coding, uh, financial management, or according to the current trend. So things have to change if we were to integrate it to a Sokola Wawasan. But if that is not ready, why we want to abolish this yeah. system? The school is open to everyone. It's not because uh, we are holding as an identity or stuff like that. There are still some people that are still very, we hold the identity as a Chinese because we are, from our race, we are Chinese. But it's not that we hate Malay or we don't like the language or stuff like that. Most mm-hmm. of us do speak Malay. Standard Malay, kami semua boleh bercakap bahasa Melayu. If we abolish the school, is the government ready to tran- transition us to a better education system? If yes, there's a lot of money involving. There's a lot of investments to revamp the entire education system. If the government is ready, yes, the Sekolah Wawasan is very it's ideal. Yes. What about the language though? If this Sekolah Wawasan exists? Bahasa pengantaran will be in Malay or mm. maybe in English. Students get to select their elective to speak their own other tongue. So mm. let's say I'm Chinese, then I have election yes. elective to study Mandarin. So can you tell me more about the history behind the vernacular school? A uh, vernacular school started upon independence when we got a few of the educated Chinese people and then they fought to have a Chinese education. Among all are the Lin Lian Yu. And also there's a lot of Chinese kapitan like in KL when they have a lot of money. I would say they, they get wealthy after the tin mining. Then they want to reinvest the money into the education. We get to enjoy the privilege because of there's a few Nenek Moyang, yang, they, they fought for these educations. And of course, when they fought for the vernacular school system, it wasn't easy. So there's a lot of uh, negotiations and also discussions and the systems remain until now. You speak so well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some people think that this vernacular school is not very good because it kind of divides you guys into this certain race going to separate schools. There is both pros and cons, but you as a Chinese Malaysian yourself, what is your take on this vernacular school existing in your country? I know there's a lot of argument saying mm-hmm. that the school separates and divides people. On a certain level, it depends on individual and also the environment, whether you get to mix with the other people or not. But for me, I don't think right now I have a problem mixing with non-Chinese people. Although I'm from SJKC and my circle of friends, they all have very good Malay friends and Indian friends as well. Because we all work together and we study together. I do not deny. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are maybe some certain small parts of Galinte people whereby they are used to the Mandarin since the six years of primary school. And then when they, in the family, they are also very Chinese type, very traditional. And then when they move on to, maybe they go to the Chinese uh, independent school, the private school, then their entire life are more towards Chinese. And then when they graduate, also go to Taiwan or China and they might have some problems or difficulty speaking or mingle with the rest of the non-Chinese people. There are certain people, yes, I do not deny that, but that doesn't represent the entire 7 million of uh, Chinese populations over mm. here. Uh, we were just 12 years old, you know, 12 mm. years old, 13 years old. Then we go to the SNK. Of course, we do not have so many kind of prejudice when we were still 12 or 13 years old. We still mingle well and now we are still working together. We still have friends like that. Yeah, I agree with you. At the end of the day, I believe it's based on our own perspective, right? And how we see Mm. other people and see the world in general, right? Yes. Sometimes if we judge other people a certain way, 
it reflects more about us rather than those other people. Actually, um, in Malaysia, we have Sekolah Agama. On a general perspective, it's actually also a vernacular school for Malay. Uh, mm -hmm. Because that one is solely for Malays, law, like very less Chinese would want to go and study. La. But Malay also got Agama school. The Agama school is open for all. Chinese school is also open for all. Thank you.